One, two, three, SCA! Okay, I'm gonna practice a bit of my really bad Japanese here. Um, technique I wanna look at for throws tonight is the kosotogaki, okay? So, the real concept I'm looking at here is how I'm loading my opponent's weight. If I want to throw him over a, a foot, I need to load the weight on the foot. If his weight's on this foot, and I go to sweep this foot, he could just lift his foot out of the way really easily, and he could balance on the other leg. If his weight's on this foot, this is his point of balance. If I take the balance out, he will fall over. Now the cool thing is, if I can time things as the weight is transitioning from one foot to the other, I get the benefit of it's a little bit lighter to move, but it's where his weight is going. If you think about it, when do we fall over? When we step on a slippy floor, when we step on a patch of ice, as we transfer our weight and we're confident in putting our weight, and it slips. So that's effectively what we want to do to each other. So the way I'm gonna set this throw up is I'm gonna load him first to this side. So his weight is loaded over this foot. If I wanted to go out and go for my big osotogari, or to go for a throw across here, I'm loaded this side. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna transfer him back and as I transfer his weight to this foot, I pull that foot out from under him and put him on the ground. So seeing that a little bit more dynamically, I'm here, I load, I step, I throw. Now, his defense, if he is nimble-footed, as I come down here, if he could transfer his weight to the other foot enough to start lifting this foot, he would lift it round and step it behind my foot and go for his own throw. My reaction is to follow that foot. So I load in this side, as I step here, as that foot starts coming up, I lift with it. And I still get my throw. I have to be alive to be able to react. So that's my basic kosotogaki. Now there are times where we're getting gripped here. He's got a dominant grip on the inside. And I can't get my grip on the other sleeve. So if I just go and sweep this, I've got nothing, because he's really controlling the space, okay? I am going to dominate his grip. I still can't reach here, but I'm gonna step my foot here. I still can't get to his sleeve. I'm gonna go up under his body. From here, I'm just gonna sit my weight down and sit. From there, I rotate to take the top position. So seeing that with a little bit more aliveness, we've gripped up, he's got a dominant grip, I re-grip, dominate, step, sit, drop it. Little control on the ground, okay? So that's my little transition move. On the ground, we see this situation a lot. This guy's sitting, we're starting a roll, okay, we're gonna slap hands. And I see beginners do this all the time. Reach over the top and take the gear. Gonna take some grips up here, grip your sleeve. If he's any good, he just takes his guard and controls me. What's happened is, if I liken it to a game of football, the starting whistle's gone, and I've thrown a Hail Mary pass. <laughs> now, it might work, but the odds are really against it. And it's, it's just not the right move for the situation. I want to play the game of yards. I want to start off by going for short passes inside, for going for short little run moves. My nickel and dime game, just working a little bit here. So I'm gonna to go to his feet. Great way to open up if he's sitting in front of me. I've just taken the initiative right at the start of the match. Now, from this position, this is a very standard passing situation, and basic pass game that a lot of people work off is their Toriando passes, okay, their bullfight passes, matador passes. 
and there's been kind of an evolution over the years. So the absolute basic, the original pass, this still works. I'm going to control these feet, I'm going to shimmy one way, so I'm going to dummy one way, and then I'm going to step out, step back in. So it's like a little ice skating move. So I control those feet, I'm going to throw them, and I'm going to come out here. Okay? Just come into my knee on belly. Throw them, step, and my knee on belly. So it's a real basic move. It's a good one to use as a warm up. Still works. You're still going to catch people with this, even at a high level. Moving on from that, my next level, my next evolution, I'm going to take a grip. I'm going to take a grip inside his knees, and I'm going to plant his feet to the ground. So when I plant his feet to the ground, I'm now going to make my arms stiff. If I bend my arms, they're springs, they absorb part of my force. Make my arms stiff, my force, my shoulders directly above my hands, I've now pinned his feet to the mat, and I can walk around. From here, I can drop a shoulder, and go into my control position. Okay, so I'm just here, in, walk around, drop a shoulder. So that's my level two. Now, that works pretty damn well. But what happens sometimes is I'm trying to control this and pull this back. As I pull this back, he starts trying to control me here. So he's going to come inside, or he's going to control around my leg. Now I'm into a half guard game. Okay? So, a gentleman by the name of Roger Gracie, who's reasonably good at jujitsu, the gym I started out in, he, the way he would work, he would get this pressure. My forearms get inside on his shins, and I'm going to drive one down and one up. But when I do that, I'm going to kick my leg backwards and then swing it back through to come to my knee on belly. By kicking that leg backwards, I am avoiding him controlling me. So I control, I kick, and then I come through to my knee on belly. Very effective. Extremely effective. My next level is a gentleman called JT Torres. He's the first person I saw doing this, first person that showed this to me. What he said is, you get to this point where now I get the control here and the guy, he doesn't want to leave that space. You know, all these other ones work really nicely when he's left his shoulders nice and flat on the ground. But when he rolls up, it starts getting tight to be able to start now sitting up and go to sitting guard, go to shin to shin or whatever. Now I've got a problem, but something very interesting happens. When his shoulders come off off the ground, he becomes like a ball. With the middle of his spine being the only contact point. We've gone from a lot of friction with the ground to just a little tiny bit of friction. A very small friction patch means that if I push this this way and that that way, instead of me having to move, he spins. From there, I can collapse down into my side mount. So, JT, he would do this a lot. He would work people, he drives this way, he drives their feet down. When they sit up, he rocks the back and then spins them and drops down. He uh, had a pretty good competitive career, continues to have using that technique. Um, I've had him do it on me and uh, it works really well. So, I've talked about this as being the evolution. And it is a little bit of an evolution because it's kind of, if you look at competitive jiu-jitsu, it's kind of the order that we see people starting to do it over the years. But that doesn't mean any one of these moves is better than another, it's situational. You know, there's times where I still use that, throw the legs to the side. You see it a lot in MMA. It's really powerful. Like if he's on the ground, boom, and I've got these legs, and I throw those legs to the side and I come over with a big punch. That is very effective in MMA, obviously. Jiu-Jitsu, I'm not allowed to punch him in the face. Um, you know, I might think I've won, but they're going to disqualify me pretty quickly. But, you know, there's a time and place where that works really well. There's a time and a place where each of these works really well. Planting the feet, kicking the leg, or spinning the body. Okay, it's all situational. And that's the beautiful thing with Jiu-Jitsu, is there's no one technique that dominates everything else. 
It's about learning the array of techniques and then breaking it down from techniques to principles to be able to understand what's the right principle to apply to the situation I need. Great training tonight. Good training. Thank you.